Zabbix has many native functions to automate host creation, but sometimes that's not enough. So some of our users have created their own custom set of methods, approaches, and tools to automate and scale up their host creation. So let's talk about that. Let's take a look at one of these use cases. Let's welcome systems engineer at WeWork, Jacob Robinson. Welcome. Hi, this is the Zabbix Summit 2021 presentation for Omnisaya. My name is Jacob Robinson. I'm a systems engineering manager at WeWork. I was previously an AV engineer and an automotive design engineer before that. I have a small blog, monitoreverything.net, where I write about monitoring with Zabbix. It's a work in progress, but I'm trying to add content regularly. About WeWork, WeWork is a New York City-based commercial real estate company that provides flexible shared workspaces for companies. Just to show you, here are some photos of WeWork offices. WeWork uses Zabbix as its global monitoring solution for every site it operates, which includes over 650 sites and 150,000 hosts that are currently active in Zabbix. It is used across several departments. For example, some of the devices being monitored are network equipment, security cameras, audiovisual amplifiers, and control systems. An example of some of the items being monitored from the devices are ISP status, wireless client count, device switch port configuration, and TV power state. Let's talk about early monitoring at WeWork. Early monitoring at WeWork was built entirely with manual user input for everything. Airtable bases were generated by different departments, and many things were not shared across teams, even within the same department. Google Sheets were used for tracking and building internal network information and updated manually by different users. WeWork was opening buildings at a rate they call hypergrowth. The average number of buildings opened each month in 2017 was 8, in 2018 it was 18, and in 2019 it was 26. Manual entry of data was chaotic as each department had its own devices to focus on and several teams within the department had their own priorities for buildings. So what was the result of this? The result was devices with different standardization of names, passwords, and configuration. There were even some devices that were never configured. Within monitoring, this meant that there were no standardization for host names, templates, or groups. Dashboards had to be created manually, and due to non-standardization, there were always things missing within the widgets. Host data quickly became out of date due to devices being configured on DHCP or a broken device being swapped out for a new device and the records not being updated with the new information for Mac, host name, or even device model. ICMP and simple SNMP data was relied on for host status. This means that the actual host health was unknown. Now let's define the problem from early monitoring at WeWork. WeWork has over 650 buildings connected on an internal network and each building has various devices on it. Different generations of standards for the network structure, as well as different generations of standards for devices on the network, cause confusion and create difficulty in accurately recording device and network information. Breaking it down, there are over 650 buildings with a sum of over 150,000 devices to be monitored. Manual creation is too difficult because it is a lot of work, so there is a lot of potential for entry error, there are devices on incorrect subnets that would be missed, and devices are potentially on DHCP. The idea for the solution was fairly simple. Develop a system that uses limited reference data to automatically detect and identify hosts on the WeWork network, while also generating and updating records that follow standardized convention, and then have it sync with Zavix on a regular basis. The actual development was much more complicated but over the course of roughly a year, it was achieved. The solution was named Omnisaya from Wardhammer 40K. It is the god in the machine, the source of all knowledge. An overview of what Omnisaya does is that it allows WeWork to never manually create hosts in Zabbix. Reference data is the only manual data entry necessary and allows for easy classification and process efficiency. Standardized naming schemes are used to keep everything organized and allow for automations as well as external applications to use the data. Everything is done with microservice architecture, and all of the backend is done with Python and SQL queries. 
A primary database, in this case WeWork, is used to store everything. Now let's talk about reference data. So as mentioned, reference data allows for easy classification and process efficiency. It would not be possible for the system to operate without reference data, but it is minimal work and can easily be expanded as necessary. Listed are some of the most important reference data fields. Worth mentioning are building, department, device type, subnet, and WAN subnet. Building is the actual WeWork building where the device is located. Department is which WeWork department is responsible for device service, for example, networking, security, or AV. And device type is what the device's primary use, such as router, switch, camera, or screen share. Subnet is the building's internal IPv4 subnet and net mask, which is highly critical for device detection and identification. It would take too much time and pose a security threat to customers by scanning the entire network. So we only scan networks that WeWork owns and operates. WAN subnet is the public IP information of the building, which is useful for anything using the public IP and for reference to external applications that we will talk about later. So before we dive into the steps, I want to define the term layers so that everything I'm about to describe is clear. A layer is a collection of tables from a database with a common purpose and prefix in the name. For Omnisaya, some layer names are Agent, Ref, Main, and Zabbix. Agent layer refers to an agent that will run. Ref is a reference name. Main is a main aggregate of information. And Zabbix is the structure for Zabbix. As mentioned, this is microarchitecture. So each layer has small applications with a single purpose. Data within Omnisaya travels from layer to layer for changing, processing, and aggregating depending on the purpose of the layer. With that defined, we can discuss a cycle of Omnisaya. The term cycle here refers to the entire process or operation of Omnisaya. There are four major steps that Omnisaya has to do to complete a full cycle. Ideally, a cycle should be completed once per day to keep all information accurate. The cycle length depends entirely on the compute resources available and the size of the network. The steps are listed. They are one, prepare external data sources. Two, collect source information about hosts from different sources. Three, identify each host type and manufacturer based on the information, information collected. And four, create, change, or delete hosts in monitoring based on detection. So now let's walk through each step in depth. Step one, prepare external data sources. Some method of manual entry was necessary for updating reference data, as well as providing information when there is an anomaly. The condition for manual entry is that it must be as standardized as possible, and it must be available with a web GUI. One example of a good manual entry system is Netbox. It allows for all building information to be entered, such as marketing name, address, and time zone. It also allows for device type, subnet, and WAN subnet to be entered. It is completely free, it is self-hosted, it has a user web GUI, and it provides a seamless API to integrate with Omnisaya. Another data source is the MAC address OUI API, which allows Omnisaya to know how to identify hosts based on the MAC prefix that is obtained in later steps. So step two, collect information about hosts from different sources. The second step is to collect information about hosts from different available sources. These sources can be added or modified over time and demonstrate how Omnisaya can collect information from nearly any source. Some agents that WeWork uses are ActiveAir API, Airtable, Mplug API, Netbox API, Nmap, SNMP Scan, SolsticePod API, and wireless access points over API or SNMP. The information from each agent is collected, parsed, and stored into a specific table for a source agent original. This allows the data to easily be used in the next step, agent sublayers. Agent sublayers copies records from agent original sublayer and executes queries to correct, delete, or transform the records to remove junk, 
and fix spelling errors or abbreviations. When SNMP or API is used, some of the fields obtained are listed. For hardware information, it includes make, model, generation, serial number, and MAC address, specifically according to the hardware, including for other network interface cards present. For software information, it typically includes version and settings. These are just general examples, and more information per device is typically obtained. Step three, identify each host type and vendor based on information collected. So now that all the information about the network devices is available to Omnisaya, it can make predictions of what everything is. For devices that are found by API or SNMP, there is not any prediction necessary as the information is provided already. This will not be enough for everything though, so for non-API or SNMP devices, the neural network layer collects all host data available and makes predictions of host type and manufacturer. When the predictions are completed, everything from agent sublayers are written to the main layer. This includes all information about the host and serves as an actual source of truth for the state of the network. I call it the actual source of truth because it is the reality of hosts and not the ideal situation that manual entries want you to believe. ARP and MAC tables are stored in main ARP for record keeping and asset management. The main build generates main hosts, which is the final combination of every main table in the main layer. Now the last step. The fourth and final step is to create, change, or delete hosts and monitoring based on detection. This is the stage where data is converted to match Zabbix structuring in order to synchronize with the current Zabbix instance. There are three main parts to this. First is host groups, where Omnisaya copies information about hosts and groups to the primary WeWork database. Second is from main, where the main host's output from step three is put into a Zabbix structure. The last step is sync, which uses the Zabbix API to synchronize the hosts and groups. Specifically, Omnisaya is syncing groups, hosts, statistical hosts, dashboards, and formulas with Zabbix. To go over some details of each, all available groups are synchronized, hosts are synchronized for group membership, as well as template, macros, inventory, and tags. Statistical hosts, dashboards, and formulas are also synchronized. The syncing process includes creating, updating, and deleting anything just mentioned. Note that deleting is included, as this system is intended to be dynamic. So hosts that have not been seen in several months are automatically removed from Zabbix. However, they remain indefinitely within Omnisaya for asset management purposes. The final result of this is that all hosts are detected and identified automatically, which includes groups, templates, tags, all set correctly and automatically. Visible host names have type, vendor, sometimes model, MAC, and IP. The host inventory contains hostname, OS, serial, VLAN, MAC, contact email, location details, latitude longitude, model, vendor, switch port configuration, predicted floor, and time zone. Switch port configuration is my favorite as it comes from ARP and MAC tables that allow users to see details that they never had access to before. Omnisaya also handles automation of generating dashboards based on a single dashboard template manually generated. The creation process will adapt based on building, host, or group, and makes it easy to deploy hundreds of dashboards in Zabbix. Let's revisit the original problem. First was that WeWork operates over 650 buildings on an internal network of various devices. Omnisaya solves this by being a scalable solution to any number of buildings or devices. If a new building is added, it can simply be added to the reference data. Devices are continuously added and updated by Omnisaya as it is part of its routine operation. The only limiting factor is the speed Omnisaya can perform based on the size of the network and the number of hosts. The second part of the problem was Different generations of standards for the network structure, as well as the devices on the network, cause confusion and create difficulty in accurately recording device and network information. 
Omnisaya has the ability to learn new devices, and it will always keep standardized records of everything, including device physical location, such as building, territory, region, as well as all of the network information for the device. The user experience is important to consider so that your users don't dread using your software. Omnisaya allows for users to access information they would typically not be able to, as well as making it easy to search and filter for regions, territories, sites, and ultimately devices. In the screenshot taken from inventory for a camera, within overview, you can see how visible host names are set up to show device type plus manufacturer plus Mac plus IP. This shows users the most important information without overwhelming them with text. Within details, you can see the type, serial, tag, MAC address, hardware version, software version, latitude, longitude, model, vendor, host network that includes the switch IP, switch port, switch port name, switch name, and predicted floor based on the switch name, as well as site address, city, state, country, and additional site notes such as time zone. This information is populated by Omnisaya and is available for every device in Zavix. To answer how it gets so much information about cameras, there are additional ONVIF agents built to interface with Omnisaya and Zavix that return this information. And these screenshots taken from selecting host groups, you can see it's easy to search by building name, building name plus device type, territory, territory plus device type, region, or region plus device type. It is also possible to search by device manufacturer or by device type. This provides several methods for users to find hosts quickly and easily. Another result of Omnisaya is that external applications could use the host data that it generates. A tool called the AV Control Center detects a user's public IP to detect the building they are in by matching it with Omnisaya WAN subnet ref data. Then it provides them with detected devices within their building. With the devices listed, they have access to limited device-specific API functionality via web GUI. This provides options to end users that they never would have been able to access due to admin privilege limitations. And the best part is that all the devices are automatically detected. An additional result is that the system serves as a form of asset management by connecting with the open source tool Snipe IT. There are other internal applications being developed, and all the data all originates from Omnisaya and Zavix. A quick success story of how Omnisaya makes work easier. In Q3 of this year, WeWork migrated data centers and changed IPv4 networks of Latin American sites. Omnisaya only needed new reference data and one cycle for it to update roughly 25,000 hosts. This took away all manual efforts necessary to update monitoring hosts. You can see here stats from Zavix system information and the resources available to each server, database, and proxy. For WeWork, the current Omnisaya cycle takes roughly eight hours. This is based on the size of the network and the number of hosts. Everything is within standard AWS products and uses memory optimized resources. US, Canada, and Latin America require two proxies to balance the polling load. You can also see the breakdown of how many devices are found, with the majority being cameras, followed by wireless access points, phones, access control systems, and so forth. I hope this information can help understand the compute resources necessary for systems with similar host counts and polling loads. So with that, if you wish to contact me, you can email me at jacob.robinson at wework.com or at jacob at monitoreverything.net or visit my blog, monitoreverything.net, that has my contact information. Thank you for listening. I hope everyone has a great Zavix Summit 2021. So thank you, Jacob. Once again, this was really impressive, and I think this is the one that people are going to be watching over and over again, learning new insights from this from the, for their own use cases. Thank you.